Hey, what's up guys, Mikey here, and today it's time to start a new segment that I've been wanting to do for a while now. And that segment is Mikey's... Huh. Well, I didn't want to call it Mikey's pick because I wanted the second letter to start with an M. Well, until I can think of a better name, let's just get on with the show. Two things that are popular in today's day and age, for some reason, are the internet and voting. I miss the old days when Wi-Fi on an airplane was a novelty. But something that was popular among Nickelodeon back in the day was allowing the viewers to vote on which ending they want to see for an episode. It didn't happen a lot, but you can bet your ass they did that with Spongebob. Shanghai is the episode where Spongebob, Patrick, and Squidward board the Flying Dutchman ship and were sentenced to join his ghostly crew. This episode aired on March 9, 2001, according to this website, and it's the first episode in the series that's longer than 11 minutes, like most Spongebob episodes, but less than 22 minutes, like episode 56, Christmas Who. While this is the only episode in seasons 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 that's roughly 16 minutes, this actually becomes more common than you may think in the later seasons. After this episode, this longer format wouldn't be used again until episode 259, Back to the Past from season 7, and it would be done at least once per season starting with episode 410, Feral Friends from season 10. As previously stated, this episode originally allowed the fans to vote on which ending it would get. Three different endings were made, and the one with the most votes by the end of the last commercial break would be chosen for the episode and that ending would be used in all future reruns. This whole letting the viewers choose the endings thing Nickelodeon has done a few times since. Off the top of my head, the only example I can think of is Every Which Way, a live action show about a teenage girl who can cast spells like a witch from the mid 2010s. Throughout season three of that show, Daniel and Jax were at each other's throats because they both liked Emma. And in the season finale, the fans got to vote on who Emma would choose. Two different endings were filmed, where she chose Jax or Daniel. Jax got the most votes, so that was picked for the end, and that ending was used in all future showings, which wasn't very many because the show ended roughly six months later in July 2015. But that's besides the point right now. This episode was originally called You Wish during the marketing, and the opening of the world premiere called it that as well. While the Spongebob portion is called Shanghai, this is also a trend Nickelodeon would continue to do with other Spongebob specials. Advertise a special by a certain name different from what the original title card is. For example, episode 192, Whatever Happened to Spongebob from season 5, was called Who Bob What Pants in the marketing, despite what the title card calls it. After the You Wish airing, the Patchy segment was still used and it was called Patchy's Pick in reruns. Now the Patchy's Pick version is released all the time on home media. But thankfully, the original airing of this episode was released officially on the Spongebob First 100 Episodes DVD in 2009, featuring every episode from the first five seasons. Considering when this episode aired, I had no idea about choosing the ending on its initial release, and I'm sure I'm not the only one. So today, we're mostly going to be talking about the original airing of the episode since we have it right here, but I'll still go over as much of this episode as I can. So let's watch this episode and give people a chance to see the original airing. So the episode starts up and we see a pirate battle and the French narrator introduces the Spongebob Squarepants You Wish special, hosted by no other than Patchy the Pirate. Patchy introduces us at his house and explains that for this episode, the fans get to choose on how the episode ends and that they can vote by either calling or going online. He tried to explain how this was different, but was interrupted by Potty the Parrot. Patchy screamed at Potty, and he flew away with Patchy trying to find him, and then he got shot out of a cannon and crashes into a house. After that, he explained you could choose between three different endings and could vote on what you wanted to see. A number appeared, and people started calling in before they were allowed to. So many people started calling, and he went insane. Man, I miss the old school phones. Even if we don't get music as ringtones for them. Then the Spongebob portion of the episode starts up, and one morning, Spongebob was looking for the prize in the Kelpo box, when suddenly, a giant anchor crashes into his house. Spongebob runs to tell Squidward, but Squidward wasn't too interested. Then Patrick arrived, right before the anchor shifted and crashed into Squidward's house. Squidward got pissed and decided to go up the row, with Spongebob and Patrick following suit. 
A few inches later, SpongeBob soon saw a pirate ship with a spooky green glow around it. How did Squidward not see that ship before SpongeBob, even though he was right in front of SpongeBob? SpongeBob and Patrick tried to stop him, but Squidward climbed aboard to complain to the owner for dropping the anchor towards his house. SpongeBob thought the ship looked familiar, but couldn't think of who owned it. And the owner was none other than the Flying Dutchman. Or he could be called the Green Baron instead of the Red Baron, because he's green. SpongeBob said Squidward wanted to complain and ended up slipping out all of Squidward's complaints for him, which resulted in Squidward getting burnt. He tried to do the same to SpongeBob and Patrick, but they escaped just to end up back on the ship. Three times. The last time they landed, Squidward got burned again despite the fact that they didn't jump off that time. The Flying Dutchman stated that it was a rule that since they climbed aboard uninvited, they automatically become part of his crew. Why is the title of that book on the back cover? Of course, Squidward refused to stay on the ship, so the Flying Dutchman dropped him down the Fly of Despair, a void filled with endless, terrifying visuals. SpongeBob and Patrick agreed to stay a part of the crew. He assigned them to swab the deck and make it look good and scary before a little haunting spree. After not knowing what good and scary meant, he screamed at them to just make it look scary. So they did. Later that night, after as little as howling didn't go as planned, SpongeBob was assigned to find someone for them to scare. They found a kid to scare, and Patrick moved them behind some rocks, and the ship got scraped to death. Or maybe the ship's already dead. The Flying Dutchman is a ghost after all. Then the Dutchman started to scare the kid, but SpongeBob and Patrick missed the signal at first, and then acted like dorks when they did try to scare him. After that, they kept screwing up every other scaring job they were assigned. Later on in their bunk room, the Flying Dutchman came to the realization that making them his crew for eternity wouldn't work out and stated that he plans on eating them. SpongeBob and Patrick got scared and when they tried to leave, they could only leave through Macy's. As they tried to escape, they kept getting sprayed with perfume until they made it out. I always hate going in there. So there was another time where SpongeBob tried to escape the Dutchman ship through the perfume department? Then they overheard the Dutchman talking to his diary about his dining sock and how he couldn't eat without it. So while he wasn't looking, SpongeBob and Patrick tried to escape with the sock, but they got caught. Give me back my socks! Everyone knows I can't eat without it! So Sandy Cheeks knows about the sock too? After a brief squabble, Patrick breaks it up and the Dutchman agrees to grant them three wishes. SpongeBob and Patrick were excited, but then Patrick accidentally wishes that they had known about the wishes earlier and Spongebob accidentally wishes Squidward was back. Squidward had landed back in his house after falling through the fly of despair, and then ended up back at the ship. The three of them started arguing over who would get the final wish, but then the Dutchman broke up the fight and decided to choose who would get the last wish himself. And right before he would choose, the word vote flashes on screen. I thought I could trust Spongebob not to mention politics. It cuts back to Patchy reminding us to get our votes in, followed by Potty sleeping, and it cuts to a commercial. When it comes back, Patchy tells us to walk the plank. He then apologizes and states before they show which ending got the most votes, they would show the endings that didn't get picked. And the first ending they showed off was Patrick's ending. In this ending, Patrick was chosen to get the last wish, and SpongeBob and Squidward told Patrick that he'd have to think very hard on what to wish for so they don't get trapped there forever. After some pressure and burnt toast, Patrick wished for gum so they could have fresh breath if they were trapped there forever. The Flying Dutchman ate them with a minty aftertaste, and that was the end of Patrick's ending. It cuts back to Patchy, and he reveals that the other ending that wasn't chosen was Squidward's ending. For this ending, Squidward got picked and he wished that he hadn't met Spongebob and Patrick before, but it was made so that they met for the first time right then and there. Even though that wasn't what Squidward wanted, the Flying Dutchman ate them, and that was the end of Squidward's ending. We cut back to Patchy again, who reveals that Spongebob's ending was chosen. With no suspense whatsoever at this point. And after Potty explodes due to a fuse in his head, we see Spongebob's ending. Spongebob was chosen for the last wish, and he wishes that the Dutchman was a vegetarian, and they got sent away from the ship, and it looks like they got home, but they were fruits in the Dutchman's blender who was preventing scurvy with his wish. The others got scared and tried to escape, with the Dutchman chasing them around the roof of a hippie van in a colorful void, and the Spongebob part of the episode ends. Back with Patchy, he says that Spongebob's ending will be shown whenever the episode is watched in the future. 
Potty then tries to quit. Patchy says goodbye and tries to keep Potty from leaving. The French narrator says goodbye and the whole episode ends. So that was Shanghai, specifically the original airing. In future reruns, the Patchy segments are called Patchy's Pick. The cut down version aired on March 10, 2001, so we're going to briefly talk about the differences. So the episode starts up and the French narrator says Patchy is picking today's episode to watch. Patchy says that his favorite episode is Shanghai. That's his favorite? It's a good episode, but still. Potty interrupts him and then flies away. Patchy follows him, getting shot out of a cannon, and when he comes back, the cartoon starts. One long-winded discussion later. The Flying Dutchman chooses Spongebob to get the last wish, and the ending plays out with the chase in the colorful void. Back to Patchy, he says it's time for the kids to walk the plank. He apologizes and states it's time for fan mail. Potty gives him a letter and blows up because of the fuse in his head, and the episode ends. So that was Shanghai regarding what we see in reruns. Overall, this is a great episode. Let's start by going more in depth into the patchy segments. It felt pretty surreal to watch the original airing for the first time. Since I've known these segments as Patchy's pick ever since I was young, I was quite interested in seeing the original airing. I will say, even when I watched the reruns, I didn't really notice all the phones in the background. And that's surprising for me since I often notice nitpicky details when watching shows as a kid. In future reruns, every scene with Patchy and the phones were deleted for obvious reasons. The first airing had a number to call, but on the first 100 episodes DVD, the number was replaced with, Yikes matey, the original 1-800 number as aired has retired to Davy Jones' locker. So the undersea equivalent of hell? Obviously because they don't want kids calling that number again. The original number is on the wiki, but I don't want to go to hell myself, so I'm not going to call it. The ending where Potty tries to leave and Patchy tries to stop him is cut as well. That's a bit disappointing because it's hilarious, but I kind of get it since they talk about the original airing. In reruns, it ends after Potty's explosion, and to not show Spongebob in the letter, it cuts to Potty after Patchy gets the letter, and then back to Patchy. And they added one of the best lines Potty ever said. I kind of wish this was also in the original airing, but hey, at least it exists. I did find this pirate battle at the beginning to be a little unnecessary because it doesn't really add anything to the episode at all. And the part where it pans to Patchy's house is just the music with no narrations. But those are my biggest negatives with either of the Patchy segments. Moving back to the positives, I do find the way they recut some of this dialogue to be kind of clever. Or the internet if you're technologically we're gonna see me favorite show, Shanghai! Ta-da! Or this. Cause it's time to announce the winner! Cause we're gonna open a letter! Or even this. What I meant to say was, it's time to announce the winner! What I meant to say was, it's time for fan mail! And thank God the original airing is forever preserved. Even without the patchy segments, the Spongebob portion is 13 minutes long, so it makes sense for them to make it a special where the viewers can choose the ending. But if you look closely, when the Flying Dutchman does his thing, Spongebob is shown frowning and has his arms crossed. In the close-up of Patrick's ending, Spongebob still has his arm crossed and the Dutchman's finger is still going in order. Looking at these screenshots of the first frame of the three different endings, Spongebob's expression is the same only in Patrick's ending. It almost kind of makes me wonder if Patrick's ending was the original plan, but then they made two more endings to make it more interesting for the fans. I mean, that would make sense since Spongebob's ending is the only ending that doesn't end with Spongebob, Patrick, and Squidward's muted voices inside the Flying Dutchman's stomach. But that's looking too deep into this. It's still a fun novelty in Spongebob's history, and I wish I could have been there to vote. I don't know which ending I would have voted for, but it still would have been fun. And I can still see why Spongebob's ending was chosen. But moving away from the voting aspect, let's talk about this episode as a whole. Because, oh man, I have a lot to say. I remember watching this episode a lot on the Sea Stories VHS when I was a kid. Even at my uncle's house. When I was a kid, my favorite scene was where Spongebob and Patrick jump off the ship and land back on it. That was a closer one! Welcome back! It's hilarious that they jump off without any hesitation despite how high up they are. 
I love to imitate that by jumping off my grandma's bed because I just love that sequence so much. I can't do that now because the bed is gone. I'm also too tall. And to this day, I'd still say that's my favorite scene. Speaking of favorite parts, I also love Squidward's abrupt screaming whenever he got burned, as well as when the boat would get scraped when moving behind the rocks. You're good. You're good. You're good. That face is awesome as well. I know everybody loves the little, 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 little that Patrick does, and so do I, but honestly, I love his random moaning a bit more. <laughs> The attempts to scare the various Bikini Bottom Mites were hilarious too, as well as all of Squidward's rants about the Flying Dutchman's ship. I also love how creepy all the visuals of the Fly of Despair look. The perfume department scene is great too. There's no explanation for it, but it makes me laugh every time, especially when Patrick gets his mask pulled off his face just to get sprayed. Fun fact, the perfume department scene was filmed at an actual Macy's. I love how abrupt the anchor crashes in Spongebob's house and how Spongebob and Patrick think the sky had a baby. I also just love the eeny meeny miny mo sayings the Dutchman says when he's choosing who would get the last wish. There's also a lot of fun details I love in this episode too, like how you can see the ice skates hanging on the wall of the bunk room after Spongebob and Patrick just went ice skating, or how the dying sock in this episode looks nearly identical to the sock the Dutchman says he wears sometimes in episode 42, Your Shoes Untied, or how the hilarious shot of the Dutchman's annoyed face is just used and unaltered whenever it cuts back to that. As well as the consistent lightning strikes whenever the Dutchman screams, gets angry, or tries to break up a fight. And speaking of which, the Flying Dutchman himself. This is his first major role in the series, as his previous appearances were just minor or supporting roles and he'd show up either at the end or the second half of the episode. I've always loved the Dutchman in this episode. All his yelling is really funny, how much he cares for his sock, and the way he was just able to burn Squidward or anybody instantly. It's not just him, all the characters are so strong and it's hard to not like anybody at all in this episode. Even Larry. There's just so much to love about it. The part where you can pick the ending makes this a fun footnote in the series history, but this episode as a whole is really funny. Even if the patchy segments in the reruns don't mean much, it's hard to truly complain about them because Patchy and Potty are still as strong here as the last time we saw them in Christmas Who. The Spongebob episode at face value is still a classic to watch with countless funny moments and all the characters are amazing here. A childhood favorite of mine and I can still go back to this episode whenever I want and have a great time. Aside from the fact that I can't jump off the bed to reenact this scene anymore, damn it. Shanghai is an amazing episode. The Spongebob portion is awesome, even if the alternate endings were a bit dark. The original patchy segments where you could vote on what ending you wanted were definitely fun when this came out. I still have a soft spot for the patchy segments that were used in the reruns, even if they don't necessarily need to be there. But I still love this episode so much, it's hard to truly complain about it in any way. And it's a good thing I have the original version right here to enjoy even if I wish I knew about it sooner.